Welcome to Sunday with the Best, the magazine show that's all about CUNY. I'm Tina Beth Pina. Lots of unique and interesting topics are being taught across CUNY. And on today's episode, we'll go inside the CUNY classroom. We'll see stories about social media, healthy food, puppet making, and so much more. First up. While the art of puppet making can be used for storytelling, it can also be a powerful tool for activism and social practice. The students in the art program at Queens College show us how. We strive to make sure that our students are not just uh, you know, being prepared to be art teachers, but they're being prepared to be you know, highly effective art teachers that are going to make a difference in their communities. Not just teachers that are going to go out and teach about visual arts, but teachers that are going to be able to reach their students and, and really use art as a vehicle for transformation. Puppet making has been happening for centuries. Bread and Puppets, that's uh, a theater company that started here in New York, actually, in the 60s. And the whole idea was that they used these really oversized puppets to get attention and to protest against things like the Vietnam War and about environmental issues. And they found that when they use these big puppets that people paid attention to them and remembered their message and that when they went to protest also that law enforcement didn't take them and they didn't sort of make them go away. So the whole concept is here at um, Queens College and in our art education department where we teach people who are art teachers is to help them use that same concept to go into classrooms and to teach their students how to use their hands and build puppets to send messages of their own. In some cases about politics, in some cases about the environment, in other cases just about what they feel but to be able to tell stories. I've already started implementing craft into my curriculum. My elementary schoolers have, we, we really don't usually do a lot of craft and now I've been incorporating it much more and I find that they are much more fulfilled in what they create. It's a very important art form throughout many different cultural uh, backgrounds. I have students from various cultures and um, I thought it would be a good way to get them excited about different projects that we would be doing. Once upon a time in the land of ice and snow, something strange and mysterious happened. The story that the students in this class are going to perform is based on Miki and the North Wind, which was written by Anne Miranda. And it's an Inuit tale, a story that hails from Alaska. And it's about a child. In the story, the, the original version, it's a boy, but our group decided to make the main character a girl. And it's about this child that all of a sudden finds that they have to be the provider for their family because the father mysteriously disappears when he went out hunting or fishing. The child then has to go and encounter the north wind, a force of nature, and sort of to demand, um, you know, to get food and resources back that, you know, the child assumes was taken away by, by nature. So part of it is this notion that some children, especially, you know, immigrant children and um, children from lower economic backgrounds sometimes actually have to play a really important role in their households and sometimes they're providers. So it's addressing that conflict um, that children can connect with and it's also looking at it from an environmental standpoint how sometimes there's this disconnect that we have with nature and how sometimes we see it as a villain and we sort of struggle and fight against it where we need to embrace it and collaborate with it. We are all in our positions. Positions, everybody, positions. Crafts oftentimes are seen as something that only small children do or that aren't, isn't as important as you know, major artworks that you see at museums. It's considered high and fine art. So we want to make sure that they value crafts and that they get exposure to it. So that's one. But also as a university, we think it's really important that when they, our teachers go to teach students, mostly in public schools, they go with these strong social values and hopefully pass these social values on to their own students so they can then be informed citizens and be empowered to make choices for themselves and for their communities versus just being subject to the decisions that other people make for them.
Up next, Hunter College collaborates with a famous New York theater company to offer a whole new approach to working on the stage. I feel very positively about the collaboration between Hunter College and Tectonic Theater Project. We feel very strongly about teaching a generation of students to listen to the theater and to be able to analyze the theater in this way because you're not only training students to go on and do theater but you're also training students to watch theater, to analyze theater, to know how to process this kind of theater. Why are you always leaving? Are you mad, Madeline? She's so weird. <laughs> Madeline, it's time to go to the resource room. Speak! My name is Andy Paris, and I'm teaching the 2015 Tectonic Theater Project class, uh, which is really a class about moment work, which is the technique that Moises Kaufman and myself and um, the rest of the members of Tectonic Theater Project uh, created to, um, to help us form our work. You know, the way that a play is normally formulated is um, someone goes into a you know, very small room somewhere and writes a script, uh, you know, uh, and, and then they give that script to um, a director who then hires a bunch of actors and they try to realize that script and they try to make that script true. And this work allows you to kind of go the opposite way. So you're playing with the elements of the stage, seeing what story comes out of those, finding the poetry of props and sound and, um, uh, shape and movement and starting there before you have a story before you have any text and playing with those things And then once you have those moments which are units of theatrical time you can then um, layer them and sequence them and it's a way of um, Playing with theatrical structure so tectonic means the art and science of structure So we're interested in how narratives are created once I introduce them to the technique of moment work then we introduce this theme of identity and we were talking about um, not only how we identify ourselves, but what it means to put a label on something. We even talked about botanists and how they classify things and um, our seeming general societal human need to put things in boxes. The written material is generated by the students, um, but then sometimes I would ask them, oh, well, you know, why do you feel that way? Was there something that happened to you that made you feel that way? And all of a sudden, these amazing stories started to come out. They'll bring in moments where collectively they'll work on them, but it's one person's moment, and I'll work with them individually on how their moment is forming, what they're working with, what kind of forms they're working with, what they're interested, what they're trying to communicate, and then I can feed back to them what I'm seeing and hearing. My great-grandfather, Egidio Viola, came to this country in 1894 with only $12 in his pocket. He worked on the Lower East Side as a tailor until one day owning his own shop. I love teaching at CUNY because there are real people here. They're going through their lives. They're, they're working. They have family. Um, they're, they're here in New York, you know, and I think that um, it allows if you ask them, you know, what's going on for them, it allows for them, them to bring their lives into the theater. I get cast as the lead in a play. Then I get a 104 fever and I can't perform. I can't get sick anymore. Help me! Stop eating wheat. Stop eating dairy. Stop eating sugar. Stop eating everything. <laughs> I knew of Tectonic's work, and I had seen several of their plays, um, but I had never worked on it as a practitioner of any kind. And it's really made me sort of rethink the possibilities that the stage can offer us. Tectonic Theater Project was formed around um, a dissatisfaction with what we were seeing in um, the theater world around us, that we felt like um, there was a lot of theater that was happening that could happen on TV or in a film. And so we were dedicated to trying to find what is inherently theatrical. 
What can the theater do that other media cannot? Somatoform disorder. On some level, that was really freeing, being right. able to just be like, okay, this is all new, just start from scratch, try something and see what happens. I think there's no going back at this point. I feel like there's, there's the before and now there's the after. So it's really, it's really taking a step back and, and really trusting yourself more, not only yourself, but everything that's around you. What I was surprised by with this class is that they were such good listeners. They really just, they listened, they were committed, and it taught me a lot about what it means to be in your own skin, to be present. It's been a wonderful opportunity as a Hunter student, as a human being, to be able to work with Andy and, and be able to create all of this beautiful work that we get to showcase to everyone and with my fellow students. Working with everyone has been fantastic. I think these opportunities of bringing in professionals into an educational setting are, um, they're few and far between. And I think when something like this is presented to you, uh, you really have to take advantage of it. I think you'll like them. Gemma. It's important that you remember how incredibly young you are. You're only 20 and you're having fun, but one day you will meet the right man for you. And whatever they do, a theatrical education is uh, incredibly useful in the world to be able to communicate. I mean, really that's what this comes down to, is how do we communicate our ideas? And how do we listen to what's being communicated to us? And that is something that is somewhat lacking sometimes. In, in our culture, in our society. At Hostos Community College in the Bronx, the new Food Studies program combines disciplines in an unexpected way. Food Studies program is an interdisciplinary offering that's designed to give uh, the undergraduate students a firm understanding of food policy, how food policy intersects with nutrition, health, and the environment and issues of sustainability. What we want to do is provide a foundational knowledge for students of food policy, its uh, scientific implications, its health implications, and its relationship to health and wellness at a community uh, and citywide level. We want students to understand that complexity so that they are in a position to address it both as students but also as citizens. The three main areas were community health, natural sciences, and uh, oddly enough, people may find this unusual, uh, English writing. We had a professor who had a great interest in environmental issues and food issues. This class is the expository writing section that is offered to students in the food studies program because it gives them a background on how food can be processed, how it can retain wholeness, or how it can be institutionalized. And they are running the soup farmer's market, which they have help prepare and cook for it. All the ingredients in these soup are whole foods with nutritional value that haven't been over-processed, haven't been converted, don't have additives or preservatives. This is part of the service learning project where students do work above and beyond just essays. Students can learn about the type of food options it's a perfect opportunity because Hostos is located in a certified food desert. They learn about the difference between agri-industry and agriculture. They become more active participants in their own decision-making, in their own health. I'm starting to learn more about health, about eating better. I've cut out all processed foods and I started eating things from the earth. And actually what happened when I started doing that I'm half my size, from a size 16 to what I am now. I feel that by coming to Hostos, that will help me be more resourceful in what I do locally or wherever I go, as long as I live, I can inform somebody of what I've learned, share what happened to me. I've learned a lot about how to eat good food and how good food do to the body. 
I could remember somewhere last year um, I was diagnosed um, hyperglycemia and my doctor advised me to eat organic food. I have no problem with my sugar. I've lost a, 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 about 20, 30 pounds. Students are learning how to be critical, to respect the earth, to engage in the earth, to be part of um, the decision-making process, to be proactive for themselves and for the community and for the world because agriculture ties in with the environment. class is plants and society. What I'm doing in this semester is to pilot some of the, of the exercises I plan to do with a botany of food. Food yeah. studies program has four tracks and one of them is sustainability and environment mm -hmm. and this class will fit in that area because it's a more scientifically oriented class. The South Bronx uh, historically is a, it's an area with, that has been marginalized in many, many different aspects. It's an area where we have high rates of uh, many health-related issues, diabetes, obesity, and many of those uh, health problems are related to, to the diet. And I think it's very important, the fact that hostels and institution in the community is running the program. The teacher has been great. She showers us with a lot of information. You gotta be able to digest it. I, Foods like oranges, apples, um, oatmeal. Some of those plants that I consume, I've been learning a lot of it in, in the school, actually, with this course that I'm taking. I'm hoping that we're going to have a good number of, of capable alumni at uh, the senior colleges, perhaps a couple in graduate school, creating a foundation for a different and more sensitive model of uh, evaluating and thinking about health and wellness and food policy. Abaru College business and art students join forces to work on a common project and learn about 3D printing. Monica and I have collaborated for a number of years and uh, basically we saw 3D printers and we heard that there was one available on campus. So we got this idea of how can we create a course in which students have a hands-on learning experience with a new technology and explore how that might impact the development of their businesses. Uh, but we lacked skills on actually how to make the prints and to do the designs. And um, through that, that led to the introduction with, with Zoe. We saw there was a great opportunity to collaborate between uh, art and business, entre entrepreneurship and design, specifically uh, in the realm of 3D design, 3D printing. And that model is one we're seeing more and more in society, right? That there's no fixed job. You don't just do one thing. You go and you do lots of things and you become the author, the creator of your own career. So there's the creativity and then these, the operations, the business side that comes in. So it's sort of a perfect marriage of, of both worlds. We come up with a theme for the course that the students are gonna tackle. And this year the theme was uh, building community at Baruch. So we went through uh, a process called design thinking to take them from determining what the needs are of the community and then coming up with solutions and then finally the last stage is going to be their prototyping. And that something that you design has to involve 3D printing in some way. It can involve a 3D printed object, it can involve 3D printing as an activity, it can just use 3D printing to prototype something but has to involve 3D printing in some way. One team is interested in developing a dorm that focuses on 3D printing and art and design. And then we have one team, their idea is to build community by making parking better for commuting students and faculty. So they designed this um, 3D printed traffic cone. So that's more of a kind of fantastical. Another team is focused on a building that brings together business students as well as art students and offers programming and rental space. The fact that consumer grade printers have become affordable, there is now a flood in the market of printers that are targeted at the educational community. What 3D printing is is an additive manufacturing technique. 
The simplest form that we see out there is something called fused deposition modeling, FDM, where you take molten plastic and you uh, start drawing uh, shapes in molten plastic and they start layering one on top of another and then you get a form in the end. This is made using FDM technique. There are other kinds of techniques that are used um, that uh, usually involve lasers, so that's what's going on with this printer, but that's um, called stereolithography, and in that you generally are starting with liquid resin and exposing to laser light, and the laser light hardens the liquid resin. We're seeing 3D printing used in many different fields biomedical applications, architectural applications in the aerospace industry, car industry, basically anywhere where you need something that is customized and specialized. Today, they should be working on developing their 3D digital models on SketchUp um, to get ready so they can make a 3D print of it. And then the other thing that they're working on is developing a business pitch that they're going to be presenting. And in it, students are basically supposed to cover certain topics, um, pretending that they're trying to get support from a key funder so that they can go forward with their idea. They have to learn how to work well in a team environment and collaborate with each other. So that's, I think, a big thing that comes out of the class. Again, we have students coming from different disciplines. All of those activities are collaborations. They, are, they involve coding, they involve electronics, they involve software and computing. And this is interesting to our students to actually get their hands on something that they can touch and that they know is the result of a lot of sort of abstract processes, but that really to them is very tangible. We also allow them to learn by doing throughout the class. If you fail, that, that's okay. The importance of the class is being able to go through the entire process. You can read about like historically, oh, when the internet came, how that shifted things for so many people and so many businesses and, and how that changed the world that we live in today. And similarly, there's a lot of discussion, like we have these 3D printers now, how, like, there's a lot of fantastical thinking. How might that shift things for the world today? And I think it's very exciting for us as well as for the students to not be sitting back and waiting for other people to be thinking about that. They can make their own conclusions and, and predictions in terms of you know, what's going to be happening in the world. And I think that's very, that's very exciting. Can you imagine using interactive theater to change lives? CUNY's Project Change is doing just that while fostering leadership and community development. Screenshot a picture, put it on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, your dirty, your whole send. This scene from CUNY's Project Change interactive workshop is one way young people are shining a light on the different issues that affect them. Three, what's going on? Your girlfriend and her friend is on Instagram and Facebook talking about me. Art imitates life. These things are actually going on. So we're not just making things up. It's a reflection of what people are going through. You're looking at a peer education model. And anytime you have two peers talking to amongst themselves or talking to each other, it's going to have a great impact. Project Change is a five-year-old program funded by the New York State Department of Health that's made up of a select group of students called Change Agents, who are part of CUNY's Creative Arts Team, or CAT. The students, along with professional actor teachers, create one-of-a-kind interactive drama workshops. We trained students from two CUNY campuses, Mega Everest College and York College. We trained them in dramatic skill sets, um, in terms of learning interactive drama skills to address not only adolescent sexual health, but as well as cyberbullying, as well as conflict resolution, as well as relationship violence. I'm happy that Project Change is definitely going into the neighborhoods of Jamaica, Queens, and Crown Heights, Brooklyn, because a lot of times there's not a forum to talk about what's going on. 
they have a forum. We're a support group for them, and they're able to reflect and tell us, hey, this is what I'm going through, and we can give them advice. And one of the things we like to encourage them to do is talk about it. Don't hide it. Don't internalize those feelings. Talk about it. And someone you know might be going through the same thing, but you wouldn't know unless you actually verbalize. What do you think this character is thinking right now? She's not admitting that, that she was wrong. I feel proud and excited that we're engaging the audience. And it's a good time to just listen and learn from them just as much as we're teaching them. One thing I definitely learned is, uh, especially like as a man, of more self-control and, and self-discipline, especially when it comes to relationships with girls. Um, they, they Girls, they, they're crazy nowadays. So <laughs> certain things that we do or we say, you know, especially not, girls, females are considered sensitive. So the things that we do, things every day, may have a major effect on them, even though it may be like something very little to us. Mm -hmm. So that's why it only validates that we need self, as men, we need self-control and discipline on how to handle certain situations, especially when it comes to communications and trust. I learned a lot today. I feel like there's a better way of telling people how you feel instead of putting it up on the internet. So I just feel like you just need to talk to people more and like express how you feel and talk to them about it. You don't need to spread rumors. We can at least show a scenario that depicts that, those choices that a character might be making, those characters in crisis, or those options or choices that they could possibly make, then we feel that we've done our work and that we are making a difference. That's our show for today. For more information on what you just saw, check out our website at cuny.tv or take a look at our Study with the Best Facebook page. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.